Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. If you are new to the Master's Voice Prophecy blog, you are welcome. And the best way to navigate this channel is to use the playlists that have, that have been helpfully provided for all viewers on the dashboard. So if you're having trouble getting to the dashboard, the best way for you to do that will be just look below this video and you're going to see the title of the video and then you're going to see the name of the channel, the Master's Voice Prophecy blog. Click that and it will take you to where the channel is and you're going to see, I think it will say home, it will say videos, it will say playlists, and you'll see a different list of titles. And there on the dashboard, click videos and then you will see all the videos that I have made, usually in order from the newest videos all the way back. I think it's three years now to the first one that I made. However, if you are new, I would really recommend that you go slightly along the list until you see playlists, click that, and then begin to go through these videos using the helpful playlists. The main playlist for the Master's Voice Prophecy blog is the Russia and the China playlist. I always recommend that playlist first, not because it is the first prophecies that God gave me, but it is because it is the first prophecies that the Lord directed me to put up in video form. So they're not the first prophecies on the written blog. It's the first video prophecies. And that is because that is the most important part of the judgment that God is going to bring upon the United States in the future. America is going to have a great war with the twin horns of Russia and China, and America will not be victorious in that war. America is going to be defeated in a future invasion featuring Russia and China. And therefore God wants to warn his people first, the church first, that have different expectations in their hearts from what God is actually going to do here. So I strongly recommend that everybody who comes to this channel, if you see the intros, watch the Russia and the Pro and China prophecies first. Other important playlists on the Master's Voice Prophecy blog the sin series, if you are struggling with certain attitudes, certain habits, certain mindsets, addictions, or personal actions that you constantly repeat, you're in a struggle against sin, and yet perhaps you don't know that your actions are sin, that they are offensive to God, I highly recommend the sin series. Look on the playlist, list all the playlists, open all of them, and you'll be able to find the sin series. Another important set of prophecies on the master's voice uh, is the repentance playlist. It is extremely important for Christians to know how to repent. Most of us think that we are doing an awesome job in keeping our garments white before the Lord, but I'm here to tell you that most people have no idea how to properly repent to God, how to properly offload their sins and give them to the sinless savior so that he can in return, give them forgiveness for sin and cleanse them of their unrighteousness. As it says in one John chapter one, verses five to 10, those verses very clearly lay out how it is possible to be deceived and think that you are walking closely in fellowship with God when actually you're separated from him by sin. You are walking in darkness. Christ is walking in light and Christ cannot enter into the darkness to partner with you in deception. He invites you to leave that deception and leave the trap of sin and come into light so that you can have oneness and fellowship with him as your Lord and savior. So Russia playlist, sin series, and repentance playlist, three of the three most essential playlists here on the Master's Voice Prophecy blog. But today the Lord has given me such an interesting word. I just received this word today, June 26, 2023. And this word falls into one of the most different types of playlists that is exclusively available here on the master's voice. And that is the supernatural playlist. God has given me about 14 prophetic words concerning the demonic beings who call themselves aliens. God also refers to them as aliens because he says that they call themselves what humanity has named them and humanity has called them aliens. And so that is why when God is always talking about it and people are saying, why doesn't he say they're fallen angels? Aliens are not fallen angels. 
That's why he doesn't say they're fallen angels. The reason God doesn't call things what you want him to call them is because he is God and he is perfectly well versed in every single thing under the sun. So if God is calling something something, you should ask yourself, why is he calling it that thing? Aliens are not fallen angels. Aliens are not also demons. Aliens are hybrid beings that are made from many different types of creature by Satan. They are a satanic hybrid creation. And the Lord has revealed in that supernatural playlist on aliens that many of these aliens contain human DNA. So they can't possibly be fallen angels. Can they? Because fallen angels don't contain any kind of DNA except the DNA that is particular and peculiar to them. So there's two supernatural playlists. One of them is exclusively about extraterrestrials, aliens, whatever they're calling themselves. The other one is about um, Nephilim. It's about the fallen angels. It's about giants. And today the Lord has given me um, a very interesting word. I was worshiping God today with all my heart. I mean, just going in and I've always shared that when, when I get really close to the Lord and I'm pouring out my worship, uh, sometimes I would want him to respond to me about, you know, my life and the things that I would have been asking him in prayer. But very often the prophecy will come and it will be completely unrelated to me. And so today's prophecy is called the mighty men are returning and I am not smiling because it is a positive prophecy. I am just filled with the joy of the Lord and I don't see why I have to suppress that just because of prophecy. So the mighty men are returning June 26, 2023. This prophecy has not yet been posted, but it does involve quite a few others that I have covered on the supernatural fallen ones playlist. And so I will try to integrate very important information from those uh, previous prophecies, because I have to tell you right now, as I was praying to the Lord in tongues today, this prophecy began to come through. And one of the things that it showed me, the topic that the Lord chose to go into today is that these things are very close to God's heart. So please listen to this that I'm saying, because there is a habit among Christians of today and I see it all the time by the things that people leave on this blog and they leave now on uh, the other channels and they leave it now on, on TikTok mostly, which is why doesn't God talk to you about this and talk to you about that? God is not McDonald's where you can walk up and, and order a prophecy the way you want it. It is disrespectful to the heavenly father first and foremost, because he is the source of information. You are not the source. I am not the source. God is the source. And so in terms of, who is to be honored and who is supposed to do the honoring? God is to be honored and we the human beings are supposed to do the honoring. But most people today, they don't belong to any church. They're not submitted to any pastor. They have absolutely no training and spiritual things. And so they think that when prophecy is coming forth, they can come and say, but what about this? I wanna hear about this and that. If you want to have a playlist, go to iTunes and pick your song and then listen to it. When you come to a prophecy space, the messenger that God is using is honoring God, not you. I'm speaking what God wants to talk about, not what you want to hear. And so if you're not able to understand that, then as long as you leave these comments, I'm not even going to regard them because I am here 1,000, 1 billion percent at the pleasure of the Lord. I live to bring out what God wants to talk about. And the second thing is this, when God continuously brings a theme, it is either he keeps bringing it because he knows that people are not listening. He is bringing it because people do not have the requisite understanding. They are not being taught the topic properly. And that is certainly the case when it comes to giants, fallen angels, and the fallen ones. Everybody and their grandfather is an expert. And yet, where are they getting the information from? They're getting it from TikTok. They're getting it from YouTube. They're getting it from Ancient Aliens channel. Very few people are being taught this topic from the perspective of the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit is not the one who is teaching you something, you will not know the scriptures to back it up. You will not know the truth of the information. You will be like a modern day parrot. You will just repeat what you saw on someone else's TikTok. You will just repeat what you saw on someone else's video. But the depth of understanding, which is what will save you in the end days, you will lack it. And so God is bringing this information forth because there is a lot of misinformation. A lot of people are not taught. And you know what? Giants, fallen angels, and Nephilim, it's all interesting now. 
I'm just going to be as blunt as I can in this video. It's interesting now because right now it's just on TikTok. Right now it's just on Instagram. Right now it's just, it's a quick video that you watch for a few seconds and then you flick and you save it to your favorites and you think that's so interesting. What you don't understand is that God brings this message because these creatures are coming. And when they are coming, the grid will not be up. You will not be able to get back on TikTok and jump back on YouTube and say, I want to now connect with that woman who was talking about them. Because now something is standing outside my apartment building. And when I look out the window, I see only the knee of that creature. Now is a good time for me to open my app and look for that woman and ask her, they've already eaten all my neighbors. It's just me and my dog. What do you think that we should do? You won't have the benefit of that. All you will have is your spirit. And if your spirit knows how to call upon the spirits of the living God, and if you don't, if you were just running here and there, as the Bible says, in the last days, knowledge will increase and men will run here and there. That's the information highway. That's the internet. That's having everything at your feet. And yet you are not becoming skilled in the truth in the day that the fallen ones are on earth in the day that they are now demanding and deceiving to be integrated with human society, you will not find me. I will be minding my business. I will have all my prophecies written down as I always have for the last 11 years. And you will be with whatever knowledge you built up in the good years. The mighty men are returning. Just a moment, please. The best banner scripture for this topic will always be found in Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 1. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. There were giants on the earth in those days. And also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. And so I'm going to read the Lord's scripture and by his grace, we will go through, I mean the Lord's prophecy and by his grace, we will go through the prophecy and then I will come back to that Genesis chapter six, verses one to four, a passage of scripture that has caused a lot of confusion in the end times. Mostly I notice among middle-aged and old people. And that is because middle-aged and old people were taught lies by the people who lied to them in times past when we didn't so much have a video ministry. A lot of lies were taught in American theology. A lot of lies that came from the bellies of men who either were not given the understanding of scripture pursuant to the end times. These are the end times, which means that God has opened a whole cache of scripture, a whole bunch of scripture that was not understood in times past. And so the fathers in those days, these are the old pastors, these are the old um, leaders, they taught according to what they studied in seminary, which is not bad, except that in seminary, they were not necessarily given the whole truth. And they were also taught a lot of man-made fluff by man-made people who built man-made Bible schools and just taught man-made doctrines that cannot function now in the end times. If you are full of man-made doctrines from the old guard of theology, if you have learned those things and you think that those old dysfunctional swords that are now blunt and messed up are going to work for you in an age where God has said that one of his versions of kindness will be to take some of the old people, a lot of the old people home, and the reason that he said he will take a lot of the old people home is he said, Celestial, my servants cannot bear the sight of a giant upon the earth, which is true. Old people's hearts are not as strong as young people's hearts. If an old person sees a mermaid coming out of the sea, 
An old person sees a spaceship descending from the sky. That old person is going to have a difficult time called hypertension, called coronary, pulmonary embolism, a stroke. That old person is going to be hurt in ways that God, who is their loving father, does not necessarily want to see them go through. And so the Lord says that as we go further in the years to come and transhumanism becomes a thing and young people rooting out the eye, why? So they can put in the red robot eye from Terminator because it's got infrared capabilities and looks cooler. Old people don't need to see that. Old people don't want to live in a world where they go into the store and a hologram will pop up and say, hello, Mrs. Johnson, are you here to buy stuff for your husband, Stuart? Old people like to chat with the people at the cash register. And so old people are going to be very uncomfortable and unhappy in the beast system world that is coming, the transhumanist world that is coming, the world where women are going to openly mate with fallen angels and demons. And so the old guard believes a lot of old things. And as long as you are alive, middle-aged and older people, God is offering you the opportunity to come into the truth you are welcome because if you cling to the man-made doctrines that have carried you thus far and you happen to be an old person that God has chosen to live like Caleb and take many mountains in the times that are ahead, your old sword is not going to work. You're going to need brand new information. And so if you want to learn, this is the place to do it. But if you want to argue, I can't help you there. Here is the word that the Lord gave me, and it was pounding in my spirit until I had to stop the prayer and take my, my implements and write down what God said. Descendants of the giants are among you. Descendants of the giants are among you right now. Unclean beings born of a woman through surrogacy, or made in a lab from recovered DNA, the Nephilim are among you. This is the time of the end. This is the time of Daniel's prophecy, the iron mingled with clay. This is Noah's day. The spirits of angels encased in human flesh, walking the earth once more, as mighty men of renown, haven't you heard it? Haven't you seen it? The mighty men are returning. They are being born right now. Children with strange powers and strange abilities, able to blend seamlessly with human beings until it is time to show their power. They are right in your midst, but you can't tell. They have existed since ancient civilizations, replacing themselves with more of their number at a replacement rate that is equal to or higher than the human population. These are the men of Genesis 6, the mighty men of renown. Great feats, great deeds, great history. Read the books. It is all of them. Roman history, Greek history, men who did impossible things in Africa near the Nile. It is all of them. The Nephilim have returned. Jason and the Argonauts, the adventures of Ulysses, the labors of Hercules. Their children will unveil themselves their children will expose themselves. Their numbers are too great. They have defiled the world with their ideas and technology and burdened the world with their presence. The earth is weary, celestial. The earth is weary of bearing her burdens and has come to me to complain. The earth has suffered them long enough and now she will vomit them out. The earth will vomit up the Nephilim and they will come out from every aspect of this place and show themselves to men. 
They are of all colors, all races, and all persuasions. They are white and black, Asian, and every other race under the sun. Some look like Spaniards. Some look European. Some are African. They cover the spectrum. Some are human in how they look, and some are non-human. You can never mistake them for a person. And so there is so much more here, as you can see, as I'm scrolling. But let us go back to the top, because I really want to do this word of God judge, justice. So I'm praying and I'm pouring out my spirit to the Lord. I mean, really seeking him in prayer. And this thumping sound, this thumping word begins to come in my chest. Descendants of the giants are among you. Descendants of the giants are among you right now. And the Lord is saying this over and over. And as a result of his voice rising in importance in that moment, my voice begins to go down until finally the prayer comes to an end. And I get my implements to write down what he is saying. God is saying that right now, today is June 26, 2023, and I have now been doing this ministry publicly. This is before others who may know me or may not know me. I have been doing this since May the 29th, 2019. For one and a half years, I did it in written form only on the master's voice. That is www.the-masters-voice.com. I did it for a year and a half in written form only, writing down many of these things that a lot of people had never heard in modern day so-called U.S. or even international prophecy before. And one of the things that people found hardest to accept is the fact that God says that otherworldly beings who were always thought to be mythological from a far back time in human history would be returning in the flesh to live with men. People struggled with that. And there are many written prophecies on the master's voice that explain Genesis 6 in depth because the Lord took me deep into those things and showed me that a lot of the things I read as a very young girl of eight, nine, 10 years were not mythology, were not stories, but were basically his so-called primer in my heart, my ABCs that I would later grow up into when he told me, I think it was 2014, do you know that the things that you were reading are real? And he began to teach me. So when I was sharing those things about Daniel's prophecy of the iron mingled with clay, Daniel 2, 43, and things like that, people were extremely astounded to find that someone is saying Jesus Christ is Lord, but someone is also saying that Jesus Christ would like to let you know that fairies do exist and that they are murderous, blood-sucking creatures that have teeth that look like Jinzu knives. They are not the cute little thing from Peter Pan. They are bloodthirsty, very deceptive, murderous beings that can change their form into almost anything under the sun. It will be a tiny form, but it will still be that fairy. They are very highly deceptive. They are territorial. They are killers. They are Nephilim, part of the wide range of creatures that Satan created once in the old world. And that is why God sent the flood. God grew tired of the presence of these beings. They had corrupted the earth. They had turned man evil. The Bible says in Genesis 6 that God repented him that he had made man. Why? Because every desire in the heart of man was evil, the Bible says, sometimes, no, continually. And God was sick of seeing a creation that he envisaged and made in the garden of evil turned so wicked, mating with fallen ones, and he wiped them away. So many people think, God says, their descendants are here, unclean beings, he said, born of woman through surrogacy and made in a lab from recovered DNA, the Nephilim are among you. And so every, 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 every good message, we go back to the word of God. 
So this is for all the people who have received a lie because as the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and I think it's verses 8 through 11, they received a lie because they don't love the truth. And so they will perish because the truth that would have saved them, they rejected it. So let us not be people who reject truth. Where does the doctrine of the sons of Seth come from? America, examine why you believe what you believe. I just read you Genesis 1 to 4, and the word Seth doesn't show up once. What does show up is this. Now it came to pass. It means in the passage of time. As time was passing by and man had sons and daughters, let me read you just some random verses from chapter 5, Genesis 5, just what's here on the page. After he begot Mahalalel, Canaan lived 840 years and he had sons and daughters. And then I'll skip to verse 15. Mahalalel lived 65 years, and he begot Jared. And after he begot Jared, Mahalalel lived 830 years and had sons and daughters. And then it says to verse 18 that Jared lived 162 years, and he begot Enoch. And after he begot Enoch, Jared lived 800 years, and he had sons and daughters. And so what do we see here? This is a genealogy of all the people who came down from Noah and his three sons having, uh, sorry, not Noah and his three sons, men and women, the genealogy of Adam, which begins in Genesis chapter five. And so we're watching how God created man and made him in the likeness of man. And then we're watching basically how human history how human society is multiplying. And what is a phrase that we keep hearing here? Had sons and daughters. So Gen Genesis 6 says this, in the passage of time, as man was multiplying and having sons and daughters, it says that men were multiplying on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them. So this is Genesis 6.1. Genesis 6.1 is not paying attention to sons at the moment. Genesis 6.1 is saying that a class called men. Now, do men have children? No. Men lay with women and then the women receive seed and they get pregnant. And so women are the one who bring forth children. Genesis 6.1 is focusing on men and women who together bring about children but Genesis 6-1 is not interested in the sons of men. Genesis 6-1 is focusing on the female child being born to men. And then it is Genesis 6-2 that focuses on sons. But it doesn't say the sons of Seth, which is what the fathers of America have told America. And America believed it without actually going to the scripture to see what the scripture says itself. Genesis 6-2 says... The sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. So right here, we see a group that is not men. This group is called sons of God. When you translate that in the ancient text, it is actually bene ha Elohim, which means the sons of Elohim. Elohim is never a word that is used for any creature because that word is the father of hosts, the father of the angelic hosts. Seth was the surviving son that Adam and Eve had after Abel was killed and after Cain was banished. Seth was the third son that they have. Seth has never been referred to ever in his human existence as Elohim. That name is reserved for God. So the father of the angels is God. Beneha Elohim, the sons of God. So this group is talking about angels that saw who upon the earth? The daughters of men. The angels observed that women were beautiful. 
and they came down. Their location was upon Mount Hermon. 200 angels, Semyaza, Samseo, Uriel, um, Umseo, I think one of their names were. They came down, 200 of them. They took a pact upon the top of Mount Hermon and said that we, by mutual, mutual imprecations, you can find this information in the book of Enoch. To those of you who are afraid to read that book, you're afraid to read it at your own loss because that book is mentioned in scripture in a few places. And that book gives perfect clarity into what Genesis 6 only covers in synopsis form. The angels came down and they said that we are going to agree as a group. We put hands together in a pact, a covenant that we commit to do this thing. And then they took women to be their wives. And the book further goes on to detail how these angels taught women things like how to cut roots, how to do spells, how to do all kinds of things. And I explained in many of the old videos that you can find in the Supernatural series that when one class, even if it is the angel class, falls in love with the other class, they do what all people in love do. After they finish the act of intimacy, they talk, they share information. And so these women that the angels took to wife were the first beings on earth to receive what is known as arcane knowledge secret knowledge that human beings should never know. The angels pass this information on to their partners. And that is how many things such as astrology, reading the stars, horoscope, all you that follow horoscopes, all you that say, I'm a Taurus, I'm a this. That is arcane knowledge that God never intended humanity to follow divination, sorcery, witchcraft, and then later how to make weapons from war. It was the fallen angels that told mankind that there were metals in the ground. It was the fallen angels that told mankind, did you know that there are sparkly things like diamonds and sapphires and rubies in the ground? And this is why you can see in the Bible that humanity was mostly agrarian, raising sheep and cattle and growing corn and stuff like that. And all of a sudden we come to a point where there is a man called Tubal Cain. Tubal Cain. And then from Tubal Cain, all of a sudden people are making weapons and building cities. And there's this massive industrial wave. So a lot of people, they will say there was the first industrial wave and the second and the third and the fourth. And they forget that is there was a biblical industrial wave where people went from being very simple to all of a sudden very advanced. And God mentions it in this prophetic word that I have today that all the ideas and technology that we have received, these leaps where people are talking about a singularity and talking about transhumanism, it's coming from the same place. It always came from a defiled source. Only a defiled source would approach humanity and tell us that we should consider titanium arms and titanium legs, and we should, we should upload our consciousness to the cloud. This is just a brand new form of defilement but it is coming from an ancient source. And if you are confused about why, it is because Satan will never enter into the rest of God. Satan is never going to enter into the kingdom of God. And Satan, most of you don't know how determined and committed that guy is. He is determined and committed not to go to the lake of fire alone. So whether Satan gets you on the basic levels such as fornication and homosexual, homosexuality and pedophilia, whether he gets you through the sins of the flesh, whether he gets you through the sins of the heart, Heart, arrogance, pride, prejudice, bearing false witness, or whether he gets you in the industrial wave that is coming, the final industrial revolution, the industrial revolution that says man should fuse with machine. The devil doesn't care whether he gets you on the old biblical sins or the brand new ones that are coming. All he cares about is that you should never enjoy a final rest with God, that you should turn up at the door of heaven and be rejected because you are a fornicator, or you should be rejected because you are committing sins of the flesh or sins of the tongue or sins of the mind, or you should be rejected because you show up like a cyborg and cyborgs don't go to heaven. He doesn't care which door you pick. He just wants you to pick one. And so if you are not taught these things, you will go to concerts where they are putting demons up in lights and everyone is dancing and thinking, oh, this is so next level. You are being initiated at those concerts. 
The people that you love are preparing you for hell and you are helping them and giving them money to do it, which is so, so unwise. The devil doesn't care how he gets you as long as he gets you, just as long as your soul will go to the lake of fire with him. Satan will not rest. His goal is all, not some of humanity. That's why the Bible say, if it were possible, even the elects would be deceived by the things that are coming. Satan's goal is to get all, but I thank the Lord Jesus Christ that his goal is to redeem some. You get to pick which one you will be. Praise God. Just a moment, please. So the sons of Seth doctrine is completely false. Seth is not even here in the text. What is here in the text is that men had daughters. And what is here in the text is that God had heavenly sons, the angels who gazed down upon women fell for them, mated with them, shared a lot of unclean knowledge with them. And by this, the hearts of men were darkened. Now, what did angelic spirits and human flesh bring into the world? The Bible says that there were giants on the earth in those days. When the sons of God came into the daughters of men, when angels lay with women, now, there's been a lot of questions that I already answered two years ago in 2021 when I took the time, months I spent going through the Fallen Angel series with people saying, how can an angel sleep with a woman? Take your Bible and read the story of who came to tell Samson's mother that she would have Samson. It was an angel who looked like a man. The woman could not tell that it was an angel. The entire time that she and her husband were talking about the angel, they kept calling him the man. The man who told me I would have a baby. Oh, husband, look, the man has come back. Who came to talk to Gideon and tell him that he was a mighty man of valor? It was an angel who looked exactly like a man. In fact, Gideon had several interactions with the angel, and he did not know it was an angel until he made an offering to the angel, and then the angel disappeared in a cloud of smoke. That is the first time that Gideon knew that the human standing in front of him was not human. We also look to mythology many times. These gods like Odin and what's his name? Thor and Zeus and the rest of them. They appeared as men to women and slept with them. And only later when they would disappear or later when they would turn their lovers into cows, such as Io, that is when people knew that they had been interacting with fallen ones. Another time that people would know is when the baby would come out and the baby would be strange. The baby would come out like a normal baby because many people don't have the understanding and they're like, oh, how can a woman give birth to a giant? Surely she would die in the process. When women give birth to giants in those days, the baby didn't come out giant formed. They would come out exactly like a human baby, maybe a little chubby, but exactly like a human baby. It is when the baby began to grow and grow and grow and grow. That is when people would know this is not of human stock. This is one of those girls that sleep with angels and she has brought forward Nephal, fallen one. Nephilim, that is their plural name. So it is only in the modifications and manifestations of the child's special abilities, ability to run faster, hunt faster, extreme size they used to have in those days. The book of Enoch says that they reached 3000 L's, which is just tons and tons and tons of feet. Only then would people know this is not human. So the text right here to those who have been following a false doctrine, if you want to cling to that doctrine after you hear this, then it is simply because you are stubborn and you just think that the past is better than the truth and that is your choice to make. Daughters gave birth to non-human sons and this frustrated God and God said he was not going to strive with human beings anymore. The first punishment for this is God cut short life. So we no longer see these 700 year old, 800 year old lifespans anymore. Man's lifespan drops to 120. And if you study genealogies after that, you will actually find people's years declining to 101 and 98. And that is why now you can find us because of environmental factors and disease that most people can't even reach 65 years of age anymore in good health. And so the giants of the past, God says, let me continue from the word that I have received here. The giants of the past 
It says they were giants in those days and afterward, which means that the flood did not take them all away. God says that their descendants are among you right now, and they are unclean beings that are being born of women through surrogacy. And I've shared here on the master's voice that the Lord revealed that there are women who know that the babies being planted into them are not human. The Lord says that these women fully know that this that there exists a breeding program here now in the end days to bring forth more of this type of blended hybrid baby. And he says that they willingly partake. They see it as doing a great service for science. But there is another type of woman who is kidnapped and implanted with these unclean seeds. They are also used unconsciously, unknowingly in the breeding program. And the dream that the Lord gave me for this has been shared on the master's voice. It is called the iron mixed with clay, the mighty men. And in that dream, I saw that I wanted to have a baby. And so I went to these things called IVF clinics. And at the IVF clinic, the man said, oh, okay, you can have a baby. But he didn't do the procedure for me um, the way they normally do it now. This man brought something in, an, in a tube, you know, like a test tube, a very big test tube. It was so big that I could see the embryo at the bottom and the test tube was so cold that I think he had a cloth when he was holding it. It was like ni liquid nitrogen, very, very cold. And then he held it for a bit and he explained to me that he wanted wanted me to drink this baby down. And so I drank the baby down and then I carried on with life and I even forgot that I had gone to get this baby. But when the baby began to grow in me, there was a situation where a friend came to visit and he said, oh, my girlfriend is having a baby. And then I said, well, I'm supposed to be having one too. But then when I lifted the shirt, my stomach was covered over with the hard skin of a crocodile. And I shared all the understanding that the Lord interpreted to me out of that dream, which is that when these creatures are growing in the wombs of the women who knowingly or unknowingly mother them as surrogates, you can't get that baby out for dear life. You will not be able to abort that life form. It protects itself. It forms such a hard barrier. My stomach was like the back of a crocodile or an alligator, so you wouldn't be able to punch that baby, cut that baby out. It preserved itself and would protect itself until it was fully grown. And it also, because I could see the raised marking of a reptile on my body, the Lord was showing that they will manifest what they are when the time comes for them to come out. So some of them come out and it is visible upon sight what they are. And in the prophecy that is called settle the accounts of men, the Lord says that in the final days, it will be open. Doctors who deliver babies are going to see what they never saw before. The Lord said that many strange looking beings are going to be born into the earth and it will be apparent at the birth, just like it was in the ancient world. When you give birth to something that has a baby's body and the head of a bull, because the Nephilim that is a bull transformed itself to man and came to mom and lay with her and then she gives birth and then that bull DNA manifests. And that's how we get from ancient times, the creature called the Minotaur, which was half man and half bull. There will be nothing that the doctors can say about it. Strange beings, he said, strange creatures, very strange looking children are going to be born in the end times. And God says there will be a proliferation. That means multiplication of this type of being into the earth. So through surrogacy, IVF might be one way, but the Lord revealed in yet another dream, this is the iron mixed with the clay, that he said the human looking Nephilim are spread throughout the world and who they prey on are the promiscuous females of today. So you that goes out drinking in girls group and all you're looking for is the good looking man, available man, you just wanna have a good time. God says that in the end days, many women will become mothers to monsters. They will take into their belly seed that they think the morning after pill can get away, can get rid of, you will not get rid of that baby. You will think that you took the pill and it's gone and then suddenly 
suddenly you will miss your monthly and when you look you will be you will be filled with something that no matter how many d and and c's or d and n's you go and try to get it will not come out until it has fully gestated so that will be one of the punishments for promiscuity that you can't find in the Bible, but you can find it under what God is saying will come to those who are sexually immoral now. He did promise that unheard punishments will come to those who fornicate, and this will be one of them. The Lord says that the Nephilim are among us and they greatly seek to lie down with many women, as many as possible. And in that vision that the Lord showed me, I saw that young women went out to the club and they were looking for men and the men were there they separated and they went with the women and lay down with them but then as soon as the act was done the women all fell asleep and those young men stood up put their clothes back on and went back to different clubs to find more women and god said that they are multiplying themselves as much as they can because this is the final time and they fully mean to overpower the human population. This is the time of the end. This is the time of Daniel's prophecy, the iron mingled with clay. And let us go there to that verse. And so this is Daniel chapter two, and I'm just reading verse 43 only, but for context, the king has had a dream. The king that Daniel served, King Nebuchadnezzar has had a dream and he has dreamt of an image made of metal, but the metals are all mixed. There is the head of gold. There is, I think, the shoulders and the belly um, of silver. And then there are legs of iron. And then there are feet of iron and clay. And there's some part, I think, the middle part is of bronze. And so the metals decline in value as you go down. But we're only concerned with why does the statue have feet that are iron and clay. The feet are symbolic of the final kingdom that will be upon the earth. And what Daniel is telling this man in verse 43 is that this final kingdom will not be like any of the kingdoms before it that were showing different metals. He says this final kingdom is going to have a clear amalgam of kind. There's going to be iron and there's going to be clay. And Daniel is telling him that they're going to be mingled. But he says that the characteristics of iron cannot blend with the characteristics of clay. And so just as iron and clay do not cleave to one another, which means they cannot have a harmonious mix that stays put. Just as they cannot cleave to one another, they cannot mix so this kingdom that has iron and clay in it will not mix. And the verse says, as you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay, they will mingle with the seed of men, but they will not adhere to one another just as iron does not mix with clay. And so what Daniel is talking about here is the fact that at the end of times, there will come a kingdom that has the capabilities of iron it will be hard, it will be strong, it will be very hard to break, it will be brutal, it will be capable of weaponry, it will be crushing, just as iron is crushing. But there will be another class, and he called that class ceramic clay. So ceramic clay is just from clay. When clay is wet, it's very malleable and palpable, and you can easily squeeze it and crush it. And even if you take clay and you bake it in the oven, it becomes hard, yes, but it is also brittle, meaning that even in its hardest state, clay is very easy to crush and destroy. And this iron and clay, though they mingle, they will not be able to stay mingled. The transhumanist doctrine is coming from the fallen ones. The idea from Satan that this body, which is sand, dust, clay, is not enough. That we should mingle it with new technology. That we should become cyborgs. That we should mingle our consciousness with the cloud. That we should become something other than human. Transhuman. Higher than. That we should transition out of what we are into what Lucifer envisaged for us. But this thought was on my mind for a while and I just want to ask, 
Someone who was unable to keep himself in the presence of God. Someone who was unable to stay subservient to the Lord Jesus Christ and stay in the wonderful presence of God. Is this the person that you should be taking direction from? Is Satan really the voice that you should be listening to in these last days? Whether you're a Christian or not, do you really think it wise that the entity that embodies evil is the one who should be giving you advice for your life. That if you follow that advice, you will undoubtedly end up with the same ending that he ended up with. Many Christians who are living on the fence, playing with immorality and playing with Jesus and thinking that they can keep playing those two teams interminably, you need to start asking yourself, why is it that you are following Lucifer's blueprint and using Jesus's name as your tagline on TikTok and Instagram and calling yourself God's daughter Zion 114? or 144. Why do you have that kind of name on social media? But when we look at your life, it's more like Satan's daughter constantly sleeping with men. Satan's daughter can't stop lying. Satan's daughter can't stop gossiping. Satan's daughter, very jealous, covetousness, and with absolutely no moral, moral fiber. Same goes for men. Why is it that you want to wear the tag of the Holy Spirit, but not obey Jesus? He said, why do you call me Lord? but you do not do what I say. Why are Christians working with this dichotomous mind, a split mind, living half for the devil and then living half for Jesus and then thinking that those two can come and cleave to one another and make a harmonious Christian? I venture to let you know that many people who think that they are under the banner of God's God's safety, God's protection, God's love, you are deceived. And this is because you simply will not humble yourself to the truth of the cross, which is that we must die to ourselves. We must must humble ourselves to truly honor Christ's sacrifice. You have to die to yourself. The Bible says, unless the seed dies, it remains alone. As long as you don't want this flesh to die and you want this flesh to have an expression and you keep making excuses for the sin in your life, you are missing the mark by a mile and you will not inherit the kingdom of God. The Bible says that the wrath of God is abiding on all those who sin. So as long as you are not walking according to the scriptures, as long as you are not trying to claw your way back from darkness, from issues, and you're making excuses and saying, well, you know, I just wish I could. And I hear you, woman of God, you know, but it's really tough. Understand that tomorrow's promise to no one. And if your time is cut off, please excuse the noise. If your time is cut off suddenly, Do you want to stand in front of Jesus? And do you think that the excuses that you're making here on earth, excuses that impress you, I see many of the comments that you guys leave on my videos. Your excuses don't impress me. When I see your excuses, I feel pity for you because what I see is that people don't value the one soul that they have. They don't see their soul as important enough to fight for their soul, to fight the devil, to fight the lies, fight the temptation, fight the excuses, and fight society telling you it's okay. It's all right. We're all human. Society is deceiving you. The problem is that when you stand before God at the judgment, society doesn't exist. Society will not be there with you. You will stand alone as naked as the day that you were born. And the father will ask you, Why have you lived like this? I will stop the video here and continue this prophecy in a second video. The Lord bless you. This is Celestial with the Master's voice. Until I see you again, keep strong in the Father and goodbye.